Hi guys, today we are going to go through a relatively quick demo of renaming databases from the aspect of, let's say you've got a development database and the data is six months old and you want a copy down from production. We're going to ignore all the best practices and whatnot of data masking and changing the data from production so that the development crew doesn't have access to it, which is a good practice, but Today we're going to focus really just on a whole bunch of altered database statements that allow you to move things around, especially if you're automating this process. So if, there's my contact information. Hit pause if you want to copy it down. Otherwise, we're going to jump right in. I am using the Stack Overflow sample databases for this. And the idea here is that this is the one that my development team has been playing around with and working on forever. And this one is the new one that I'm going to be copying down from prod. Essentially, I'm going to have these two swap places. This one is going to become Stack Overflow old, and this one is going to become Stack Overflow by itself. And the REPL sub is going to go around. The REPL sub is because I was using this as a replication subscriber six months ago in a completely different test. So just ignore that and pretend that you brought this down from production and you called it Stack Overflow new, and you're going to make the Stack Overflow be old. And then this one would become, it would go from new to just stack overflow. So it's just name jockeying is all you're doing. Now, those of you that know Management Studio know you can probably just hit F2 and type a new name there, but that leaves debris behind that your DBA will hate you for. Specifically, you have the database name, but when you go to the properties of it, and most of you already know this, some may not, so we'll touch it because it's important. There are logical names for each of your files. Um, we have an NDF file here that I created for, I think, indexes a long time ago. Most of you probably don't have that. And in this, we're actually going to ignore that in some parts of what we're doing. But anyway, we have a logical file name. About the only other place that's ever used is in maintenance operations, you know, shrink files and whatnot. You never reference that in code. And then there's the physical file name, which is what you see on the drive, in my case, in the D data directory. So logical and, and physical file names are important. They're also very important in restores. So if I were to go and just change this to something, go back in here where I shouldn't have closed, these would not have changed. It would only have changed the name of the database. So if I had done this and changed it to Stack Overflow underscore old, these would still have the same names and you can't rename files that are in use. So these wouldn't have changed either. So we're going to have to go through some gyrations here. Fortunately, we have code for that. Uh, this is the rename code. Don't get too excited about all the code on the screen. We're going to go through it piece by piece. And really, it's just alter database statements all the way up and down the screen. So first thing we're going to do, and we are going to do it in steps, we're going to change the current Stack Overflow database, and we're going to kick everybody out. I love the kick everybody out and watch them cry command here. Uh, Theoretically, you're doing this overnight or whatnot. Nobody's using it, but they might be. Anyway, this boots them out so you can do the things you need to do. We're going to alter the database stack overflow and just call it an old. And all that's going to do is literally change the name. Go refresh this because it doesn't auto refresh. And I did set it to single user right there. So while I, I probably can't do this here, I bet it errors out on me. Yeah, that's a, that's a second user and now it's going to take some time to do what it's got to do. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, so we've got the database name changed, but under the hood, and I should have opened this up beforehand, my apologies, we've got, we've changed it to Stack Overflow old, but we're still using Stack Overflow MDF, Stack Overflow Log LDF, and where's the third one? There's the NDF. Those are the three that make up this database. We already saw that when I was showing you the files and the database properties. Let's minimize that because I'm going to need it again. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we're going to do the logical files, and then we're going to do the physical files after that. So logical here, physical here. All we're doing, and it's important to pay attention to this, always use your use statements. I changed it to old, so I'm using use old again, and I'm probably going to quit saying Stack Overflow so much. But I'm just going to alter the database, that one, the old one, and modify the logical file name, this, and I'm going to change the logical file name, which is new name for the logical name to this. Simple. Change the first file to old, change that NDF file to old, change the log file to old. And that's a little kludgy there, but my code works. And then I'm going to set it back to multi-user. So I run that, hopefully with no errors. Yay. Um, 
It is multi-user now, so if I refresh this, I can go look at the old database, I can go to properties, go to files, make it big, because this is not big enough to see anything. My logical file names have old, and that's what I wanted. My physical files have not changed. I didn't tell them to, so that makes perfect sense. I keep canceling this out. So, to change the physical files, you cannot do that while SQL Server has a lock on the file because the database is online, so first thing we have to do is set it offline. And let me put in my make the users cry, because I forgot to put that there. So this is going to kick everybody out, and then we're going to call XP command shell. If you want to use a batch file for this, fine. You know, whatever works for you. Uh, we'll call command shell. We'll change to my D drive. We'll change to the data folder. And then we'll do this rename command of the file. We're going to take the Stack Overflow MDF and change it to Stack Overflow Old MDF. And then we're going to do that for all three files in this case. Uh, again, you can probably you can ignore for your intents and purposes if you've only got two files, just ignore anything you see with this MDF. So I'll run that one, set it offline, run this one, and I'm going to bring this back up so you can see it. Stack Overflow MDF to old. That's this file right here. I'm going to click off of it just so I'm not touching it. And this is going to pop that window out of the way while I run it. It worked. Bring it up. Refresh it. And where did it go? Right there. So my 40 gig file has now got old at the end. So let's do the other two while we're at it. And an even better way to sort this is by date modified. You'll see Old, old, old. Those were not there before. Those are my three big, huge files. Notice that it's just redeeming stuff. That's just labels. No data has been copied here because that would take forever. That's a 120 gig database with all these files in it, give or take. All right. So now that we've done that, we've got to tell the master database that these files, or this label, is now using this physical file with old in it. So we'll do that three times, one for each file. Master says, sure, works for me, bro. We'll set it online. That won't work if you messed any of this up. If you did, if you butchered the file names, then this is not going to come back online and people are going to start yelling at you potentially. So Stack Overflow Old now has doo -doo 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 -doo, old in the logical, old in the name up here at the top, and old in the physical file names. Now, if you're having to move, uh, if you're having to copy the files to a different directory every time you do this or something like that, you would add something in here in your command shells. I'm not doing that here. I've already restored into the same exact directory my quote unquote new one or my REPL sub will pretend I restored that. It's all in the same directory just to eliminate that step, but it's really just another DOS based copy command to do that. So bring it back online. Now that one's done. I need to do this one. It's all the same stuff. So Kick everybody out, change the database name, change the logical file names from REPL sub to just overflow and overflow log, flip the names because this particular one, the NDF is commented out because this one only has two files. That doesn't matter other than this, just that's how my system wound up doing stuff. So change those names, tell master what those names are, bring it back online. I'm going to run that whole thing at once just for fun. So part two is this is the database that you're bringing down from production in this scenario. Now let's see if it worked. Refresh the database list. I have an old and I have a stack overflow. This should be tiny. This was an empty database. The ripple sub was only 16 megs. It's two empty files and it still is. That's fantastic. So I've got my stack overflow. It's got the correct logical file names, the right directory and the right physical file names. Now there's no REPL subs left anywhere in this directory. So stack overflows. Here's the current one. Here's the current one. Old, old, old. It's beautiful. It really is that simple. The tricky part is when you botch something and you've got to reverse it or understanding really the difference between you use new name for the logical files and use file name, which can also be used to direct something to a path, then you have to physically copy that if you're changing a your path. So this is the physical one. This is the logical one. You need to do them both. Reason being, and technically you don't have to, you can just F2 and rename the database, but 
If you do that and somebody else is coming along looking to clean up drive space and they're trying to match physical files to logical files to databases on the system, you want them all to match. Assume your DBA hasn't had enough coffee and he's got to come in and clean up this box. He's going to come find you and, and, and shake his empty coffee cup at you because the names don't match. So take the extra time to do it right. You cannot do all of this. You can do some of it, but not all of it in the GUI. Most of it has to be done in code. And you can put moving files into different directories here if you want, or you can go straight to the file system and just move them yourself, you know, drag and drop them, however you want to do that. But the basics are rename the database, rename, and it used to be SP rename DB. For those of you that are thinking, why didn't he just use that? Because it's deprecated. New, new thing is alter database. So alter the database name, alter the logical files, alter the physical files, You've got some single user, offline, online, but that's all in here. Now, let's say somebody said, oh, I didn't really want you to do that on that server. This is my rollback. I'm going to take overflow, back to ripple sub, down in the part two. I'm going to take the old, back to the new or the regular. And all that works in one big fat script because I made sure of it by doing it 27 times before I ran all this for you. So all of my stuff is right back where I said it would be. This one should be 16, uh, yeah, 16 megs. There it is. And the stack overflow should be roughly 120 gigs. And there it is. So you've seen it forward and backward now. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, feel free to post comments on the, uh, on the video. Reach out to me at, at Kevin3NF. If you think other people can learn from it and almost everything you could possibly ask me, somebody else can. The YouTube is the best. If you have a more generic question about this process, go to Twitter. Use the SQL help hashtag. That way you can have more people looking at it than just me. And a lot of those guys are a lot more experienced and smarter than me on this stuff, too. So they may even have a more efficient way. One of the coolest things that I learned in doing this for you guys is that using the ampersand between commands eliminates the need for batch files. I'm very excited about that. So this is actually three different commands all glued together in one line. So that's all I've got. 